Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to our deep dive first look at Keep 'em Rolling 1944 Race to the Rhine. Now this is the upgraded, enhanced and expanded edition to the original Race to the Rhine game in from 2014. In this World War II logistics and supply game, you play one of the allied commanders trying to lead your forces across France and trying to be the first allied force to cross the Rhine River. This video is video one in a sponsored series of playthroughs. We're gonna take a first look in this video. In the second video, we're gonna show gameplay. And the third video is going to be an after action style report where we play through an entire game. As often is the case with the sponsored playthroughs, we're also gonna be giving away a brand new copy of the game at the end of the third video. If you'd like to learn how to enter into that contest, check out the details at the end of this video. Apologies to international viewers. Uh, this is contest is only open to people living in the lower 48 US states. With that being said, let's take a look at the game. I'm excited to take a look at this one. I'm also excited to be bringing some gameplay of this one to the channel. I'm more and more becoming a fan of logistics games. And this one, a large part of the game is using your trucks to bring food, fuel, and ammo to keep your forces rolling across France and being the first force to reach and cross the Rhine River. Now, this is the updated edition to the 2014 game. And one of the things I also wanna talk a little bit about uh, are the enhancements and additions to this game compared to the old game. We'll talk about those momentarily, but just as kind of to summarize those, there's been a significant amount of work done on this game to add things to it compared to the original version, especially if you're a solitaire gamer. Now, just to kind of give word on the designers here too, there are two original designers that worked on the original game and three designers worked on this enhanced edition. I'll put all of their names over here to the left side. This enhanced version published in 2023 from Phalanx Games. And with all of that being said, let's take a look at some of the general gameplay characteristics on the backside. In terms of historical context and historical gameplay length, uh, this game would start probably some, it's, it's a little abstract, it starts somewhere in say July of 1944 after a rough breakout on the Normandy beachheads and the US forces and allied forces uh, pushing forward across France to try to get to Germany. Now historically the allied forces crossed the Rhine in March of 1945, so we're probably talking about seven, eight months of gameplay and if there's roughly say 20 turns in a game, the game turn is abstract because it's when you expire a deck probably talking about two weeks turns and units really uh, you've got your core counters we'll take a look at those that are kind of leading the action there's not a lot of counters on the map however you will at any given point in time have a fairly large number of trucks gameplay i think you know you've got the war theme here some traditional war game elements to this and then very kind of a euro theme in terms of the supply and logistics element of it so really kind of a, a very intriguing hybrid type of game here if we look at gameplay parameters in terms of players and length uh, gameplay here is listed as 90 minutes but we'll notice players is one to four and now is probably a good time to talk about what's different between the original Race to the Rhine and this game. And number of players is, I think, the area where this really stands out. The original version had one to three players, but as we can see here, and we'll see as we look at the maps, they've expanded the map, if you would like, to add a fourth player. Also, uh, in the one player option, the solitaire player option, they've added an auto automa that is going to kind of control to 100% the German forces. So I get a sense that compared to the original Race to the Rhine, the single player experience for this game has been greatly enhanced. Not only that, if you're a solitaire gamer, there is an entire separate game that uses the backside of this, so, this right-hand side map called These Are My Credentials that adds a lot of gameplay elements to the core gameplay for a dedicated solitaire experience. We'll take a look at that as we dig more into the game. Um, also, uh, the Red Ball Express, there's some optional rules. Red Ball Express, which I understand was a somewhat of an expansion to the original game, has been fully baked into this one as an optional rule. Uh, the rule book has been enhanced. There's some new components and some designs added to the game. And then uh, there's also been a couple of places where the gameplay has been tweaked and modified for play balance purposes. So again, this really feels like an addition where there's been a lot of effort put into uh, enhancing gameplay, making the product better, and really making it kind of a very much a second upgraded addition to the original Race to the Rhine, in particular, I think for the Solitaire gamer. Now, gameplay experience here is listed as 90 minutes. I think this is largely dependent on the number of players. I would guess you're looking at about 30 to 45 minutes per player. So the four player version, maybe two hours to three hours, solitaire version, maybe 45 minutes or so, but uh, that's largely speculating until we really kind of open up the game and get a chance to play it. 
Now let's jump in and take a look at what's inside. We have a lot of things inside this box. It's a big, heavy box and it's packed with stuff. Uh, two uh, documents here. We've got the Race to the Rhine rules and then this is a separate rule book for These Are My Credentials, which is that uh, solitaire experience that we'll take a look at too. So an entire dedicated rule book for that one. Now if we look at the uh, solitaire, if we look at the main rule book here, which is 24 pages, optional rules start on page 22, uh, other rules here. So we're really kind of talking 21 pages pages of rules, uh, but the text is rather big and it is loaded with examples and graphics. As I was kind of looking through these, um, sometimes if I had questions on the rules and stuff like that, I'd be able to look at these examples and they were clearing up anything that I ran into. Really nice design, a lot of visual pop here to really kind of make the gameplay learning experience easy. And again, we can see that it's just filled with graphics here to kind of balance out and make the learning experience easy. If I were to give this a complexity rating, rating it on a war game scale, right, on a traditional war game scale. I'm going to give this a 3 out of 10. Might be a little bit less. It's it's definitely not a complicated war game, but there is some complexity and depth and some thinking I think that's really going to stand out in the gameplay. If we look at the keep them rolling, these are my credentials rules, we've got a 16 page rule book here with a quite a bit. Now the, the the core gameplay from Race to the Rhine is used in this game. So one of the things these rules mention is everything you can do in Race to the Rhine with kind of a couple of exceptions, you do exactly the same way in this game. But there are a number of kind of more complex elements, kind of additional mechanics added into this game to really kind of flesh out the solitaire experience. And while in the main game, you're doing a Race to the Rhine, Race to the Rhine, this one is really the breakout from the, the Brittany Peninsula here. You're trying to conquer Brittany as the allied forces and take kind of the four major cities at the end of this campaign. So this is kind of a smaller scale, but it has a lot more kind of gameplay mechanics designed for solitaire play. This really feels like kind of a standalone enhanced heavily designed and thought out solitaire experience that uses this gameplay system and tacks on a lot of other features to do this. I would say this is probably a three and a half complexity out of 10. Really, you've got you know two games here, honestly, because this is the main game and then the solitaire experience here that adds a lot of different rules to it there as well. So I think a lot of fun things if you're a solitaire gamer, because again, you can play this one now with the Automa in there that's going to control the German forces. So you've got that play a gameplay experience and then you've got this whole separate game that builds off of this gameplay system. So I think for the solitaire game player, a lot of things to like in this game. Now let's take a look at our counters here. We've got uh, three, four sheets here. These are all markers, essentially. We've got some stickers for the blocks, and there aren't many main forces that you're using. It's kind of a core level game where you're going to be, your core are going to be kind of at the front edge of your forces, controlling and gaining control of areas that you're going to tag with these markers as being under control as you kind of sweep across France or Brittany in the solitaire game. So you've really only got a kind of couple of units in and of itself that you're controlling and then you're designating these areas with all of these markers, you know, different markers of control for different allied commanders as you go across the field of play. And we'll take a look at the US and the allied commanders uh, in momentarily here too. So again, we can see lots of control markers for these and these are going to be filling up the spaces on the map to tell you what the actual game state is right now. Of course, here we can see these are areas that are kind of uh, controlled by the Germans and have German forces in them here. Um, there's also a metal mechanic uh, in the game here. We can see them here. And then the uh, French forces are modeled as well for a couple of the commanders, as well as in that standalone solitaire game. These are my credentials. Some air support elements here too. So lots of different kind of mechanics, I think, that really kind of flesh out the gameplay. These are all printed on two sides. I, I believe they are identical, a little bit different here, some gray things here as well. But yeah, they're printed on both sides for gameplay elements there too. Now I'm going to put off to the side the maps because we'll look at those last. Let's jump in now and take a look, however, at our uh, player aids here. There are only uh, five player aids. Uh, not that we really need any more, but really I think they seem very handy. These are the four potential commanders that you've got in the, uh, the main Race to the Rhine game here. So you can be either Bradley, Montgomery, Patton, and this is the new one for this game, the fourth player element, which is Patch Devers, which kind of cutting across southern France in terms of that. So each one of these commanders has their own theater of operations. You're basically racing down a channel and trying to take over the zones in your channel to be the first one that can cross the Rhine at that other end. These are sequence of play, kind of all of the, the main rules that I think that the designers feel you'd be wanting to look up as you're playing the game. And on the back side here, kind of different pursuit card elements and their effects and things like that, axis reaction. There's a lot of cards in the game too. We'll be taking a look at those. So those are the four major 
gameplay aids here, one for each of the four players in the game. And then this is the gameplay uh, support for the, these are my credentials, the solitaire game, the dedicated solitaire game, where you're playing to retake Brittany here with some of the different elements about that. One of the interesting things here too, in addition, each one of these commanders has a special ability that they can use. So they're not all cookie cutters. They're kind of different ways. And the way the map is set up for each different leader, it's gonna present different challenges. So again, kind of going back to that experience as the solitaire player, you know, each one one of these commanders, if you are playing Solitaire, is going to play slightly differently than the other commander. So you're going to have a number of ways to explore the content as the Solitaire player in addition to kind of the, the race to the Rhine game. It's not really two games in and of itself. It's four game, It's two games, but there's a number of different commanders that you can experience playing it uh, in, in the race to the Rhine game too. So uh, those are our player aids. Now let's take a look at a lot of the different goodies here. We've got our blocks. These are the ones that you put the stickers on that we looked at earlier for the US forces and the French forces and things like that. Uh, and for the British forces is too, cutting across France. And now we have in a number of tokens here, these gray uh, pieces here. These are our food comp components, con 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 counters, uh, uh, blocks here. We have our fuel, the black fuel drums here. A lot of these too. And then we have our ammo crates. And one of the things you're trying to do in the game is to keep your core in supply. So you're going to be consuming fuel, food, ammo as you're driving across France, and you've got to keep your forces in supply. So one of the ways you can lose the game is to outstrip your supply. You're trying to constantly balance going fast enough to win but not so fast or not too slow, not, not too slow as you don't win, but not too fast or the outstrip your supply. And then here we have uh, the trucks here to be able to pull forward, pull forward with your supplies and keep your core and keep your forces in supply as they're driving across France. Let's take a look now at our cards. So I've spread out the 11 different decks that are in the game. And this will give you an idea, I think, of kind of the complexity and the nuances of gameplay here too. Uh, th these are in four, three different columns. This left column is the deck that's used for the core Race to the Rhine game. These, this middle two decks here are the optional rules deck for the, the Race to the Rhine game. And then there's actually five decks. Well, this is only one card, so four decks uh, for the, uh, this is, these are my credentials, new kind of added solitaire game that takes place in Brittany. Uh, to kind of walk through these a little bit, this race to the Rhine cards, um, enemy square, uncontrolled squares really can be kind of empty or they can be occupied by a German unit. Uh, these are the cards you pull as you're entering into an, uh, a German occupied space. So these are going to be tougher, of course. You're going to face some kind of a battle in order to be able to take control of the space. And in the top left here, you can see there's a good variety of here. I love the pictures and kind of the flavor tech, the flavor art here that kind of enhances the game play. And these are basically the requirements that you need to fulfill in that top left corner in order to be able to, to kind of conquer that hex and take control of it. So as you're moving forward, you know, running into these contested enemy hexes are going to be a greater challenge than if you're running into what are empty hexes, essentially, ones you haven't controlled yet. That's where you're going to be pulling these pursuit cards. Now there, this is the biggest deck in the game, but there really are four decks. We can see here that they're coded for each player in the bottom left corner. So there's four different symbols here. Each player that's in the game is going to get one deck of 22 of these cards. And this is the deck that people are going to be pulling from as they're going into uncontested spaces. And each one of these, again, a lot of flavor text and different types of events that are in these. If we look at these, we could run into enemy units and things. So here's some that have enemy units in them. Um, we could run into star, you know, starving civilians. They're going to need to give food and you get a medal for that as well. Um, captured stock. So a lot of different Red Army captures Bucharest. This is maybe some kind of basically some flavor text, but it's going to actually change the weather element if you're using the optional weather. So this is historical context, September 13th, September 15th, 1944. Battle of Peleleu goes on, changes the weather. So it's just kind of giving you the historical context that's baked into this uh, drive across France in 1944. Red, you know, Red Army captures Tallinn here, Black Market. So you've got some different options. And each one of these cards have different types of events that can kind of trigger and benefit. This gives you an extra core action, uh, but you have to halt. And so all different kinds of things can be happening as you're kind of experiencing these decks and dealing with the circumstances of these decks as you're pulling through, you know, uncontested areas and contested areas is a big part of the game. Now these here down here are the core control cards. In addition to trucks bringing forward your supplies, your core can carry supplies with them based on the capacity of these cards 
sides here. So you might be bringing forward your own supplies, but you're gonna need trucks to bring supplies to keep them going. And then these here are the commander cards. Uh, there are one, there are two, for, there's Patch Endeavors is one down here, uh, which is uh, Jake and Sandy, I think. Yeah, Patch Endeavors here. Those are the two for the, the fourth player option there. And then Brad, Monty, and Patton. And they have their own kind of special ability. You can use that and then it expands them and then it's refreshed as the game reaches kind of a reset phase as it goes through, which is its logistics phase there too. So again, quite a bit of variety here in terms of what you're engaging. I like the historical context of the events and the cards as you're driving through there as well. Then we have, um, these are optional cards. Walk Down Rain is the, Rhine is the Battle of the Bulge and or, uh, Nordwin is this kind of its southern equivalent that can happen if you've chosen to kind of include these cards uh, into the, the Axis deck at the beginning of the game. And then this is the Red Ball Express optional kind of expansion rule that adds some more cards and elements of gameplay into that if you've added that optional rule in as well. Then if we come over here to the Solitaire version, uh, this here, Reisen Saures, I apologize, I know I butchered that pronunciation. This is the German Automa, the cards that control the German movement in this dedicated Solitaire game. Then we have Intel Report, which is kind of one of the allied decks that you're using that's kind of giving you some information on what's happening for the, for the allied side of the event here. Then we have Aerial Reconnaissance Cards for the Solitaire game here. These are kind of the event cards, basically the equivalent, I think, of these Pursuit cards up here. But I'm, I'm not 100% sure, I haven't looked at too deeply how that Solitaire experience plays out here. And these are the Wehrmacht cards for the uh, Solitaire game, these armor credentials, the Solitaire ex Extra game, these armor credentials. So these basically serve, I think, instead of this deck here, this is the deck used for the German units in that Solitaire version. And then a Commander card for the Solitaire version as well. So again, we can see this is not a game that's just been tossed together. There's been a lot of design thought and a lot of great intent, I think, put into this game and a lot of care and attention to the design. And now let's jump in and take a look at our larger maps. So here's the map in almost all of its glory. And we can see that there's really, a, you know, there's two boards that come with the game. This is the fourth player option that's been added to the game for this version of the game. So this is the patched Devers over here that you can join to the map. Now you, you, if you're playing with two players, you can still use this. Uh, it's just that you don't want to have players non-adjacent, so you'd be kind of going three or four here and things like that. But there's various ways that you can play it. And a few observations here, you can see that each one of these areas, these, these four channels here that you're kind of going down. Each commander is responsible for one of these channels, driving down, eventually trying to cross the Rhine up here. But you can see that they all have their kind of unique characteristics. There's different things going on in different ways they're going to combine. Now, in a given game turn, the number of things that you're doing is actually relatively straightforward. Um, you've got two actions and then you've got kind of bonus actions. You can move a core as a main one. You can kind of take supplies and add those from the general supply to your force. You can truck or transport supplies up. Um, you've got options for air support. There's also some airborne landing rules that are in here. And then you've got some uh, bonus actions that you can take, like playing a pursuit card that you've got that's held in your hand or your commander special ability. So th the actual number of actions that you're doing is rather limited. And again, you're gonna have just a few of those blocks that are your forces pushing forward. So you're starting down here uh, and driving eastward towards the Rhine, basically trying to gain control of these areas as you, as you go. There's also a very powerful encirclement option that allows you to cut off swaths of area that you're taking and grab chunks of areas as you're going forward. I think my general sense is mastering that uh, mechanic seems like one of the key ways to doing well in the game. And again, basically you're trying to just drive across France. Here's Belgium and here's Germany. You're trying to get across the Rhine and be the first player to do that. Now, if the game, go, if you expire through your decks and, there, decks and there isn't anyone who crosses the Rhine River, then you've got a different scoring mechanic based on medals that you can earn for destroying German units and various other actions. So there's quite a bit going on here. And again, I think that gives it on, you know, it, it's a fairly meaty Euro and even on a war game scale, I'm gonna go kind of three out of 10. Uh, there's a good bit going on here. And I think there's that. And then there's also the ability to kind of learn this and play well at the game. Now, there is a second side to this map too. I'm just gonna flip this over here to show you that this is the uh, three player version. So if you're not 
linking up devers with this. The only difference really is that this doesn't connect to this board here. So if you're not using that uh, patch devers option, this would be the gameplay map that you're using here. Lastly, let's take a look at the other side of this here, which is, this is the single player version. So this is the gameplay version. Uh, these are my credentials. This is the map that you're using. And there's a number of things. There's kind of fortresses and kind of sieges that are going on in this game that are quite a bit. There's a good number of mechanics uh, that have been added to this game that really expand and enhance this game for the solitaire player. So quite a bit, I think, going on here in terms of things to explore and things to do for the solitaire player, as well as that kind of multiplayer, you know, cooperative, but competitive, right? So you're, you're all trying to defeat the Germans. Oh, I should mention too, there's also two ways in this core game here that the German forces can react to your forces. There's the automa, which is basically, you're just gonna play it out according to set rules and the Germans are gonna react to everybody the same. Or you can play the ultra mode, which means that you as an allied player are deciding where the German forces go against your, the, the players you're playing against or with your other allied forces. So you can really mess up your other allied forces using that ultra mode. So not only do you have kind of the base core gameplay, you've got two very distinct ways that the German forces can play in this game, kind of creating some variations on gameplay. Which altogether, that really makes me think that there's quite a bit to explore here in terms of depth and playability. You know, you've got optional rules that we talked about with kind of the Battle of the Bulge and the Red Bull Express. There's also a second secondary objective optional rule system you can bring in. And then the weather system itself is another optional rule that adds more to the game. So I think there is a, just a lot of gameplay to explore and dig into in this game. So there it is, deep dive first look at Keep Em Rolling, Race to the Rhine. Before we depart, let's talk about how you can enter the drawing to win a free copy of this. Again, good in the Continental 48. You have to have a mailing address in the Continental 48 states. Um, I've hidden in this video the answers to three questions. There will be a, there's a Google, Google survey, a Google form in the video description as well, probably posted in the first comment on this video. Click on that to go see what the questions are. Uh, enter in your email address and the answers to the three questions and you'll be added into one of the possibilities to be a winner of the drawing for this game on the end of the third video. Um, the, I, do, I do collect email addresses as a way of reaching out and making sure that uh, people are limited to the number of entries that they can make into the contest. I do not share or sell or give away those email addresses in any way and they are all destroyed at the end of the competition. They're just used for this, co this contest purposes. There you have it. I'll be back in another video coming up very soon to show some gameplay of this. And then I'm looking forward to the third video, which is where we'll give away this copy of the game that's gonna show an after action report style as we play through the game. So thanks for watching everybody. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'll put a link to it as soon as it is ready.